Hi YouTube, welcome back to the channel. In today's emulation video, we'll be looking at emulating the Sega Model 3 arcade platform using the Super Model emulator. The Sega Model 3 platform was released in 1996 and was unsurprisingly a follow-up to the Sega Model 2 platform. A number of those titles from Sega Model 2 found their way onto this new Model 3 board, such as Daytona 2, Sega Rally 2, Virtual Fighter 3, as well as some new titles, Star Wars Trilogy, Scud Razor, and some other real classics from the late 1990s. The board was ultimately superseded by the Naomi board in 1999. By that time, it had become one of the highest selling arcade boards of all time. So let's have a look at how to emulate this then. First of all, you'll need some games. You will find Sega Model 3 ROMs as part of an overall main ROM set. Alternatively, a Google search will probably point you in the right direction. Don't forget on my website, I do have a guide to each emulator, as well as an overall guide to finding games across the internet. In terms of the emulator, the most up-to-date version is available through the Supermodel Forum, which you'll have to be a member of to be able to access. Alternatively, you can use the website, which I will link below, which has an outdated version of the emulator, but this will struggle to play some games, some will have glitches, and others won't play at the required frame rate. The forum is certainly the best source of the emulator. Once you've downloaded the file, you need to extract that using 7-zip, and then place that folder wherever you want to. I'm placing mine on my desktop freeze. Once that's done, the first thing you'll need to do is make sure your games are in the right folder. As we're using a relatively new processor, we use the X64 folder and transfer all of our ROMs directly into this folder, like so. Once that's done, we can start up the emulator. Now don't be alarmed, Supermodel 3 is a command prompt emulator. There are some UIs now available for it, but here we're just trying to show you how the emulator works. And to be honest, if you want to use a UI, you might as well put it into a front end like Launchbox, which is far easier in any case. And I'll show you how to do that later in the video. So let's open up our command prompt. And the first thing we'll need to do is point to the right folder in the right directory. I find the easiest way to do that is just copy the extra bits we need here. Right, CD, space, place what we've pasted in, and then press return. And that takes us to the right folder location. Now if we type in supermodel, it will show us how the emulator works. This lists all of the instructions you can give via the command prompt to get the emulator to work, change resolutions, configure the input files, etc, etc. And we'll run through a few of those as we go through this. But the first thing to do is configure our inputs. The emulator does come with standard inputs and most of those are absolutely fine, including for an X input controller. However, there are a few amendments you'll want to make, such as ensuring your trigger buttons are your throttles for a racing game, and that's worth doing that now. So we'll just write in supermodel and then hyphen config hyphen inputs and then press return. And this will start the process for the configurator. It's a bit cumbersome if I'm honest. Have to ensure the screen on the right is open and then scroll for each of the instructions. Now to set an input, you press S, the key you want to use, and then tells you you've done that and then press down to the next one and continue through. So here I'm just setting up the service and test buttons. As this is emulated in an arcade, you'll be able to go into those menus and then we'll just scroll through the instructions and it really is just a case of pressing S, putting in the input you want and then pressing down to the next one. If you make a mistake, if you push up, you'll be able to go up and correct that. You'll see some games have got particular inputs you can adjust as you want to. If you want to change where your punch button is or where your pass button is on Virtua Striker, and some look more complex games like Virtua On, which use two joysticks, again, they can be configured. But I'm doing this primarily because I want to use the racing games with an X input, use my trigger buttons for the accelerator. And that's where we'll get to now. Do ensure your controller switched on before you start this process and it can still be a bit temperamental. You may find you have to go over to the right hand side and click the blank window, and it might not quite work how you want it to, and then try that again, but eventually it will recognize the, contro the controller input. Now once that's done, we can scroll through the rest of these control inputs. It will tell us this is complete, 
and then we can get on with emulating some games. To start a game emulation, we need to enter Supermodel. Then we enter the name of the zip file, so this is Daytona2.zip. And enter our parameters. So first of all, our resolution. I'm entering resolution of 1280 by 960. That's resolution equals 1280 by 960. Ball command start with a hyphen, hyphen full screen, and then press return. Now, just as with Model 2, this is emulating an arcade board and will work as if it's an arcade machine. So, therefore, your service and test keys are useful if you have any problems. It's going to be quiet now for a second so you can enjoy a bit of Daytona 2 action. Okay, so one more thing you can do with the command line as you're starting a game is to ask it to do quad rendering. You'll see I've put on the far end of the screen there hyphen quad hyphen rendering, no space. And that just gives you a slightly better quality graphic which is more aligned to have the model free produced 3D graphics. So here we are with Sega Rally 2, which is a little bit of a glitchy game to be honest. I don't think this is the emulator's fault or even the ROM's fault. There's a couple of glitches you tend to get when you go past other 3D objects. But it plays very well, plays just like the original. If you can get past the glitches, it's really good fun. So moving on now to Scud Racer. This one in particular looks really fantastic with the resolution and the quad rendering and plays really nicely with a X input stick as well, although my gameplay wouldn't show that. Here we are then with Virtual Fighter 3. Fighting Vipers 2. This really does look superb on this emulator. Much as I feel guilty about kicking a little girl with her teddy bear. And that, my friends, is a long way down. Okay, Harley Davidson. If I'm honest, not the most fun game. A bit of a dull driving game for want of a better term. But um, worth having a look at. It's on the uh, Sega Model 3. I think this is one of those arcade games that's all about actually sitting on the bike. So I did promise you one more thing. 
which was how to enter Supermodel into LaunchBox. Now I'm not going to show you how to load your ROMs, there are better videos than that that I could put together, but here you can see on the emulator setup, on our emulator application path I've mapped the Supermodel XQ file from the X64 folder to that path, on default command line parameters we're entering our resolution, so that's hyphen res equals 1280,960, then hyphen full screen, then hyphen quad, hyphen rendering, and don't forget to hyphen at the start of quad, don't tick any of the boxes, and then you're good to go. Okay, well I think we'll end it there. Thanks as ever for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Do leave comments below, give me some ideas as to what to emulate next. This is a weekly series, so do consider subscribing. Until next one, go well.